Hello Saints and um, welcome back to this tube. I am Michelle and um, I've been called by the Lord to teach the word by his grace. I'm humbled that he found me worthy to sit here with you so all of us can learn together via the Bible. I love the word of God so much, hence the name of this platform, the word by Michelle. So basically the word by Michelle is a, a simple statement as to, to, that means um, this is the word of God as understood by Michelle. So I thank God for the opportunity to fellowship with you because the Holy Spirit is so big. Whatever he reveals to Michelle, he will reveal more even to you, praise King Jesus. Um, our Lord Jesus Christ said to us when he, he, we said to the disciples that the things that I do, you will be able to do even more. Because, you know, we look at Jesus as the main movie star in the salvation work, but he's so gracious, he's given us a promise um, that we shall be able to do more. So I believe as, that as long as the spirit of the Lord is with us, even you that's listening in, when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you'll be able to do more, praise King Jesus. So um, take an example of um, Apostle Paul. Paul was uh, formerly Saul, and Saul was majorly into the law of Moses. You know, he grew up with um, in a small town where he was schooled in, in the law, right? He was taught by great men like um, Gamaleli, or what is the, what's that word, Gamaleli, or that pronunciation, the guy. A very clever guy in those days uh, that taught them the word. But you see, so when the spirit of the Lord came upon him, when he had his encounter on his way to Damascus, he turned out to be the biggest person that could explain to us the, the story of, of Jesus, uh, the gospel, the truth, the salvation walk, even though he didn't actually walk with Jesus. So Jesus walked here for three years, and we have the four Gospels. But then we, have, we also have Jesus' disciples, Simon Peter, the sons of Zebedee, you know, Nathaniel, all of them, 12 of them, Judas Iscariot, and they did walk with Jesus. But what amazes me is that we, we, we come across a guy called Saul in the book of the Acts of the Apostles who did not walk with Jesus, <clears throat> but when he has an encounter with Jesus, with the spirit of Jesus, with the light. Actually, it is the light that flashed into his eyes and the spirit of the Lord, you know, was made manifest in him. He was able to do a lot more. See, we last see Simon Peter and company in, um, you know, the early days of the book of Acts. But when, when Saul, now Apostle Paul, starts to minister, we see him, you know, appear in most of the Acts of the Apostles, and then he goes ahead to write to the people in Rome, and then he, you know, in the book, he, he, he's the one that writes the book of Romans, and then he does, he does um, First and Second Corinthians, and then he does the Galatians, the Colossians, so that's what I love the Lord about, and that's why I love the Holy Spirit so much, that when he gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are able to do so much more. So as you are tuned in, as, you, as we share, as you listen to this, my prayer is that the Spirit of the living God visits you and then you'll be able to do so much more. So I am here to show us how to break the word down. I'm, I'm here to, to with, with, by the grace of the Lord, with the help of the Holy Spirit, via the word of God, to... to, to illustrate how to get these scriptures to talk back to us. You know, God talks to us, you know, he speaks, but it's so much fun when he talks with us. Look at these two operative words. Two is one person doing all the talking and that can get boring and monotonous and, you know, but when it's a with situation, when we talk with the Lord, that's what creates a relationship. It takes two to work. The Bible says, can two work together unless they agree? There's a possibility that you haven't been agreeing with this salvation work. You're even just about to jump out of it. But <clears throat> with this exercise that we have started in Proverbs chapter 3, you'll get an opportunity to work with the Lord. You'll become one with the Lord. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right? So the word, we have to walk together with the word to become God himself, to tap into our sonship, to become who God created us to be, hence the purpose of this exercise. So let us have an opening prayer. Ooh, that was a big introduction. Father, we thank you. We thank you so much for today. 
I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me to be a vessel so that you can voice whatever you've taught me before to your people. And I thank you because your spirit is here right now. We receive your spirit to amplify the little that you have taught me from these scriptures. I pray that you give the listeners the ears of the learned to pick out that which they need to pick out. Holy Spirit, embrace my vocal cords so that what you need to come out will be amplified in a way that will help everybody. We're here for only one purpose, to walk with you, to be with you. So come and teach us how to be with you, to become one with you through conversation with the scriptures. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So guys, we're doing the book of Proverbs. Um, We've done verses 1, 2, and 3 previously, so we're on to verse 4 by the grace of God. And we chose Proverbs chapter 3 because it has a title that says, Guidance for the Young. In Jesus Christ, we're all young. I like um, John the Revelator. John was one of the disciples. He was Jesus' bestie. You know, he is the one that Jesus loved the most. Every time he had to go and do some important gigs, he took his three favorite people and John was always one of them. And uh, because John walked very closely with Christ, he comes back and writes um, the books, uh, some books in the Bible. I like First John, Second John, and Third John because when I read these books, I feel like it is Jesus speaking directly to us. And, and when John is talking to us in the books of um, First John, he's, he refers to us as little children. I have learned to come to these scriptures as a little child because uh, I don't want to say unfortunately because our God is a God of timing that you see I came to Christ very late in life way above 18 praise King Jesus so <clears throat> I had a lot of philosophy empty deceit the cares of the world in my head I thought I was wise because of how I had walked in my previous life so when I came to Christ, it took forever to break the walls in my mind so that I can be a little child. You know, the Bible says, "Come to let the little children come to me because theirs is the kingdom of God. We can never experience scripture unless we are allowed to be little children. So to be a little child is to humble your brain, humble your mind, humble your mindset. And learn to learn, and school to school, and learn to understand what the Lord is saying to us, praise King Jesus. In the beginning, in the Garden of Eden, the Lord did all of the talking. But now, when we come, so sorry, Satan came and unscrewed the brains of Eve, and then Eve went ahead and unscrewed the brains of Adam, and then we got all jumbled up and we became, we became self-sufficient. The scripture says that, oh, and then they went and made for themselves clothes. We lost our dependence on Christ, because in the beginning, Christ had given us everything. But once Eve rebels via the temptation of the serpent and causes Adam to rebel as well, we get into self-mode. We want to do everything ourselves, and we put Jesus on the shelf. And unfortunately, this has been the case for even us, born again. We come to Christ to help us, but then we go and do everything ourselves, and then we get ourselves sorry, and then we get so frustrated, and we start to think, why isn't God working? So now, this exercise is to humble us. It's for us to come back here and say, you know what, Lord? I know nothing. You are my Father who is in heaven, which means I am your child, your little child. So now, I, I, am, I am humbly requesting that these scriptures talk to me and I talk back to you so that we can converse it and then we find a way forward. Because I've been walking a certain type of way until the whopping age of 40 and it is so frustrating. And I know that that's what insanity is, me doing the same thing and expecting different results. So I have come to you because I want to be sin and now I've realized that only you are my sanity pill, praise King Jesus. So that is why we're doing this exercise, okay? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4. Let's break this baby down. Proverbs, I hope you have your notebook, your Bible, and your lovely pen. Okay, we're going to break this scripture down so that it can talk to us and we talk to it so we can converse it, so we can have a relationship. Praise King Jesus. We want the word to become flesh. When we break these scriptures down into palatable bits, this is when the word becomes flesh and we behold his glory as promised us in John chapter 1, 
verse 14. Remember, John chapter 1, verse 1 says to us, in the beginning, it was just the word. It was God saying, let there be, let there be, let there be. But now verse 14 says to us, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. So we want, we're breaking these scriptures down in small bullet points, as short a sentence as possible, so that the word can become flesh. How does the word become flesh? The word becomes flesh when we get a revelation of it. When we read it and understand it, when we read it and we meditate in it, and then it settles into our hearts, that's when Jesus becomes real in our lives. And how do we know Jesus has become real? How do we know that the word has become flesh? When we receive peace, because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Praise King Jesus. So the word becomes flesh and it dwells among us. What is to dwell? To dwell is to live continuously, to, you know, to not just visit, but to live with, to relate day in, day out, to have our daily bread. Our Father who art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. So when we come and break these scriptures down on a daily basis in our secret place, the word dwells among us and we behold his glory. The glory of the, the Lord can be beheld here on earth when we have a revelation of what the scripture is speaking into our situation until the day of the Lord when we come face to face with our Lord Jesus Christ and we behold him, you know, spirit to spirit when our spirits assemble with the cloud of witnesses in heaven and we actually touch Jesus. But for now, this is what we have to work with. Praise King Jesus. We shall behold his glory, the glory of the only begotten son of the father. Remember scripture says we cannot see the father unless we go through the son. So we're here to behold the word of God because the word of God is Jesus himself, according to this scripture, the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth. Remember, grace is actually Jesus himself because now this scripture has said the word becomes flesh, Jesus in the flesh, right? He is full of grace. Like Jesus' middle name is grace. He is full of grace and truth. The truth is the gospel, believing in who Jesus is. And the full knowledge of who Jesus is, is what gives us grace. All of us have a certain level of grace. Before we, we, we get to know Jesus, we encounter, um, we operate under a general grace. But when the Lord allows us to know him deeper, we tap into a fullness of grace that's being talked about here in John chapter 1 verse 14. The grace that multiplies as a result of knowing who Jesus is. Praise King Jesus. Um, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 says, Grace and peace, as in Jesus, be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So we come to salvation because we want all things. We want riches. We want good relationships. We want good jobs. We want to travel the world. There's a lot that we need to do, but we miss the plot when we are not taught the word because we come to Jesus and we get so frustrated because he doesn't give us what we want. But he's saying to us, look guys, there's a pattern. First, you get to know Jesus who is full of grace and truth. When you know him, grace is multiplied. Peace is multiplied. When your heart stops to do somersaults and you know, you get upset unnecessarily. When you get a revelation of who Jesus is, anxiety, anger, depression, and all of their ugly cousins, leave your heart. And then the Lord sits on your heart. Why? Via the knowledge. That's why I like this platform. I bless the Lord for giving us a space where we actually know so that we can come to Jesus from a point of knowledge. We come to a friend that we know, a friend that we understand, as opposed to having a one-way street relationship. So anyway, let us go back to Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 3, and break down Proverbs, sorry, verse 4. We need to break down Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4, because I feel like I'm breaking down a lot of scripture. But I also thank the Holy Spirit, because I think somebody needed to know the words that I just spoke. All the things that we want that pertain to life and godliness are in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Jesus is grace. Jesus is peace. According to John chapter 1, verse 14. Hallelujah. Right, let's break this scripture down. Verse 4 of Proverbs chapter 3. First of all, I'll read it before I break it down. That entire chunk of the scripture says, And so, find favor 
and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Wow. <clears throat> I like verse 4. Because if there's anything that us ladies desire is to have favor. Every woman wants to have favor in the sight of her partner, her husband. All children like to have favor in the sight of their parents, even their teachers. People that are under authority want to have favor in the sight of whoever has authority over them. Which is right, because scripture says that um, authority does not come from the east or the west or the south, but from God. <laughs> Psalm 75 verse 6 says, For exaltation neither comes from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. So I feel like all of life's hustles are centered around favor. Why? We want exaltation in the workplace. We want exaltation in our husband's hearts. We want exaltation wherever we pass. A lot of us are on social media and we're having sleepless nights because we posted a picture two days ago and we only have two likes. And we're thinking, oh my God, nobody likes me. You know, you posted it because you thought you looked like all that and a slice of toast. But no one is reacting because in, in, in your heart, you just want to be liked. And, and you know, social media is so superficial. Someone will post something and then they'll get 9,000 likes. But in reality, they don't even have one friend. They don't even have one friend. People have different reasons for liking what they like about that post. And a lot of them are carnal. But relationships can't be carnal. Relationships are spiritual. Relationships come from a point of relating, understanding. Relationships go deep. Relationships are basically minds marrying. So to, 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 to like what a person looks like is nothing. It's just an open door. It is just something that lets one into your orbit. To be able to dig deeper into the mind is what builds a relationship. I remember when I used to work for in the corporate world and even in Christ, for me to sit here and relate with you is because the Lord allowed a little fraction. He allowed me, he opened the door for me a few centimeters for me to look into his mind via the Bible. And because knowing the Lord is so exciting, I thought to myself, like, I can't hold this in anymore. That's how I started my podcast. And then it grad graduated into the YouTube channel. And then now Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. Like, I can't stop to talk about Jesus because I've fallen in love with what I know about him. Praise King Jesus. I was about to give you an example of the workplace. I think the best... Um, company I ever worked for. I worked for very many good companies, so I don't want to give favorites. I don't want to offend people, but I feel like Heineken injected so much into their relationship with me. These guys never stopped inducting us. Even to the last, I think I worked for them for six or seven years, even to the last year. There was all these programs to learn. There was all these workshops. There was all these having to be flown to a different country to learn more. There was all these having to, to have people flown into our country of operation to teach us more. Why? So that we can work together in one accord. The scripture says in Amos 3.3 3, that two can work together unless they agree. This is the one place that I worked at and those guys that have worked there for 23 years. Recently, I spoke to a friend who left even before I left and she said to me, oh, guess what? I'm at a workshop and boy, I am essing it because I'm using my knowledge from Heineken and it's applying over here as well. So these guys... They made sure that we become green-blooded. By the way, I didn't plan to wear green because of Heineken. But um, they made us green-blooded. How? They made sure that we understand everything that we need to know about Heineken so that we can go and sell it to a person so that they can drink it as well. So for you to enter into a person's mind is how you acquire their favor because then you start to do things the way that they like them. So these guys inducted us on how to enter into the minds of hotel owners, restaurant owners, you know, outlet owners, so that when we go to them, they'll favor us over the tons of brands of beers, both local and international, to get a person, the end person, to like the product. So favor is inevitable. If you're a person, you need favor. So I thank the Lord for giving us this. 
The reason why you are stressed in that relationship is you keep saying to us, this person does not understand me. Why? Uh, you want to leave them. You can't relate with them because they have failed to love what you love or you failed to love what they love. So favor is key. But look at what this scripture is saying to us. Um, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 4, it is saying, And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So you can't find favor without... See, I'm looking at the entire scripture before we break it down. You can't find favor without seeking the knowledge first, right? No wonder scripture says to us that seek first the kingdom of God and all the rest shall fall in line. How do you seek the kingdom of God? It is the mind, because God is a mind. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, the Lord, when the Lord is creating man, sorry, 126, he says, Let us create man in our image and in our likeness. Like, I want man to imagine the way that I imagine. So when we're talking image, at the time, God was creating the mind, the spirit, the conscience, because he only gets run to creating the flesh in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, where he says, and then the Lord got, gathered the dust of the earth, and he, um, he, he, he created man from the dust of the earth, and then he breathed his spirit which he created in 126, into man, and man became a living being. So if we want to talk favor business, we need to first tap into the one that created our mind so that he can teach us to get into the mind of other people. And the only way to do that is via his word because it is his word that talks about him. Yes, it is very good to go to church because you know, you just you just gave your life to Christ and, and somebody has to speak into your life. That's why you go to church every Sunday. And for those that manage to do a couple of days in the week, we thank the Lord for making you intentional because the more you sit under the man of God that the Lord has put in, in, in front of you. He comes in and explains some scriptures. The Holy Spirit comes upon him and he ministers to you and you get, you know, you understand even though you went there with a problem but guess what? It's all about God. So much as you go to church to tell him about your needs and wants, as the man of God teaches you what he teaches you, he the word of God starts to, you know, get into your spirit. You know, I like um, Hebrews chapter four, I think it's four verse 12. It says the word of God is um, living and active. It is powerful. So every time that the man of God comes in and talks, the words, okay, let's do Hebrews for, for the sake of the one that hasn't encountered this scripture. Remember, we agreed that we shall approach this business as little babies, okay, little children. Um, Hebrews chapter four verse 12 says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So, you know, you came to Christ, you gave him your life because somebody said to you, give your life to Jesus. So, you know, those who are tired and heavy laden, he'll take all of the stress away. So you come and you attend church and you're like, yeah, Jesus, I'm... You, you know, even have this habit of... This man is talking forever. He's, he's talking like for almost an hour. When shall we pray? I just want to pray. What do you mean? I want to tell God to take this issue away. But God is thinking, mm -mm. sit here, listen to him. Because every time the word of God comes out of him, it is living. It is God himself. It's living and it's powerful. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. Like it will come and separate whatever was in here. It will unschool you from what you're understanding from before with the intention of it taking you back to Genesis chapter 126 of how the Lord created you. Because once you do that, you make your way prosperous. You have favor in the sight of God because your mind is functioning according to the way God's mind, mind functions. And when that happens, getting along with people becomes inevitable. We have guys that are in church and they're so busy. Every time they go to church, they have come to slay the spirit of rejection or to slay the spirit of whatever anger all these evil spirits that have access to our spirits simply scream the absence of the spirit of god when we come into the word i gave you john chapter 6 verse 63 when jesus says to them that the words that i speak to you are spirit 
and our life. The flesh profits nothing. So let's focus on the spirit because I created the spirit first. So every time you come here and you listen to the word of God, his spirit enters you and his spirit enters you. How? Via the knowledge, the understanding of what this word is saying. It erases all those other spirits that were caused by the words of other people. Words by the words that have been said to us. They even start in the labor ward. The nurse is abusing your mom. Your mom is cursing you because of the labor pains and she's regretting the day she ever went to bed with your father and she's saying all of these words and then even the, 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 the midwife holds you and then she says what an ugly baby so from the minute we come into this world these people throwing around unnecessary bad words that plant this uh, you know and you know, even, even if we are babies, our spirits are so alert. So we pick up on these words, even though, please, I'm speaking to you from spiritual, from a spiritual um, context. According to Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, the Lord knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. So, you know, the Lord knew you. What does that mean? Your spirit was known by God in heaven before your mom and dad got together for you to form in your mother's womb. So when I say to you that when the nurse says that you're such an ugly baby, you hear. Why? Because it is your spirit that hears. Your spirit is a thousand years old. You were there from the beginning of time. Like you chilled in heaven until your mom and dad got together to form this flesh. And then the Lord sent his spirit, your spirit, who you actually are. You are your spirit because you're a spirit being. It is the spirit that gives life. So the Lord breathed life into that fetus. And then you became your mother and father's child via the flesh. That's why you look like them. But your spirit, you are a child of God. So your mind has to stay aligned with the mind of God for you to have favor in the sight of God. Unfortunately, when we come into this world, the world does a good business of, of, of diverting us from the mind of God. The system has put things in place that qualify us for being successful people. You have to be in this class by this age, and then you have to have graduated by this age. You have to have gotten married by this age. You have to have gotten a job by this age. You have to have um, had X amount of kids by this age. You have to speak this way to do this. And, and the sad bit is we have left out the spiritual context. So you find a person growing, growing in the physical, in earthly wisdom. And we're disregarding the mind of God because it is the mind of God that gives us favor. That's why even though you are a successful pilot or a doctor or a lawyer, your manners suck. How do I mean? You do not have friends because you do not know how to get along with fellow human beings. You only know the earthly way of being successful. And the Lord is calling you back to his word because what his word teaches us is to how to relate with him. And when we find favor in his sight, then we're able to have favor in the sight of man as well because God is, what, is the one who created all other men. You will find that once you're perfected in the image of God, in the imagination, in thinking like God and hence walking like God or acting like God, you will easily make friends. I was talking to a friend yesterday, one of my babies, and, and she said to me, oh, you know what, Auntie Michelle, people randomly they meet me in you know in a taxi and they start to talk to me they tell me all their secrets and then they tell me all of these things and they're so old and I, i'm just little me i said to her that that's what happens when you get a continence a continence is um when the vibration, when your mind starts to gel with the mind of God, people see God in you. See, that's how Jesus was super attractive. He comes in and, you know, he started his ministry after Matthew 4. And then he finds Simon Peter and his brother, Andrew, and they're fishing. And he says to them, follow me. They follow him. Why? Because he has the mind of God. He just gave them a solution to their life problem, which was catching fish because of the authority that he has in God. So because of the authority that he has from God, when he talks to man, man easily follows him. And then he finds the sons of Zebedee. They're fishing with their father and some hired servants. And then he says to them, follow me. Scripture says they throw their nets at their father. They leave the father with hired servants 
and they follow Jesus. So Jesus has a baby magnet wherever he goes because he does the will of his father. He has the favor of his father because he is in one accord with his father. So we are here to dissect the scriptures so we can find favor. And um, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 4 says, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So I said to this girl, look, because you know she's, she can't be more than 20. I said to her, listen, everybody will be falling all over you, but you have the mind of Christ. And we've spoken severally about humility, so don't use this as an a bad opportunity. Don't let it work against you by feeling that you're all that because everyone wants to talk to you and tell you everything. Always remember that it is Jesus in you. And they probably talk to you because they need counseling about a thing or two. And she said, oh yeah, you're right because I always end up advising them and this, that, and the other. So there you go. Because you are following Christ, people automatically follow you. Yeah. What does Paul, Paul say? Follow me as I follow Christ. Praise King Jesus. So that is what getting in getting aligned with the mind of god does for us favor in the sight of god and man but i am warning you when you start to get a lot of favor in the sight of god expect favor from man but favor from man can be at a disadvantage because you'll attract all sorts you'll attract good people you'll attract dogs cockroaches spiders snakes but the beauty of it is you will have acquired that the spirit of discernment and what is discernment to discern is to be able to tell good from evil and that one also does not appear by just lifting holy hands nope this one appears when you read the word of god and you understand what he likes what he likes is good because god is good and that's his nature while what he hates is evil because when you do what is not good in his sight that qualifies for evil. It may be good in your sight, it may be beautiful, but because he doesn't like it, it is evil. So when you read this word, when you come to sit with fellow human beings, you have your little Bible thermometer in the head. So you sit around with sister so-and-so at church, and as soon as the pastor comes in, she starts to say, oh my God, he's wearing that shirt again. I bet you he's going to, when, sisters, uh, when the pastor starts to preach, Sister so-and-so starts, oh, he's going to give us that example from that story of when he was in England. So, and then, then she starts to say, by the way, pastor, she starts to talk, to talk evil, bad things about the pastor. So now for you, you don't need any neighbor to come and tell you that, you know what, sister so-and-so has been in church for 12 years and she's stagnated. She's not making any progress because she specializes in the words of people versus the word of God. She goes around bad mouthing other people because sister so-and-so hasn't understood the main precept in the Bible, which is love the Lord and love your neighbor. And when you love your neighbor, you don't bad mouth them. So sister so-and-so has an evil spirit upon her and she's seated next to you. You come to give your life to Christ because you love, you know, you you have a love for Christ, but the more time you spend with sister so-and-so, she paints it in your heart that this church is bad, pastor is bad, everyone is bad. She only has bad stories about the church. So before you know it, your mind is blocked. When the man of God is at the pulpit, the spirit of the Lord is upon him and he's come with a message for you. But because of the garbage that sister so-and-so has spewed into your ears, your heart has grown dull. So seeing you see, but you don't perceive. Hear you hear, but you don't understand. And your heart has grown dull. And for that reason, you're unable to turn from your wicked ways. And the Lord is unable to heal you. Just like, it, you know, it was prophesied by prophet Isaiah. So you are those people who don't graduate spiritually because your heart is far from the Lord. So when we come here and read these things, when we know to discern fellow human beings like, ah, okay. This guy comes to you and he asks you out on a date. And when you go on a date, he spends the entire time talking about himself. He loves his hair so much that he almost pulled out a mirror to fix, you know, whatever. And when the waiters come and, and then the, the waiter spills the water on him by mistake, he blows up like a trumpet. Yo, you can discern and you tell, ah, the last person that loved themselves like this was Absalom the son of King David, and these are symptoms of pride. So I might have a narcissist on my hands. I better leave before he destroys me because when all is said and done, he's about to destruct, he's about to destroy himself and I might disappear with him. And I have a huge calling upon my life 
and I have to be with a guy that will nurture me because according to scripture, I'm supposed to submit to my husband. And hey, how will I submit to a person who only loves themselves? This person is not about to love me. Or you'll go on this date and then this guy, you, you, you give him some questions, some testers, because you've read your Bible and you've seen that everybody who was very successful in the Bible had a good relationship with his dad and mom. King Solomon had a good relationship with his dad and mom. David has a good relationship. Everybody that's successful in the Bible, behind him, there's a powerful what? Mother or father that poured into him. So you ask him, uh -huh, tell me about your dad. Don't tell me about that idiot. He squashed my dream. He did this and the other. He beat up my mother. He did this and everything. And you're thinking, oh, meanwhile, he's a servant of God in church, he even prays in tongues. And you're thinking, oh, wow, he's harboring unforgiveness. If he can't forgive his dad and mom, the people that the Lord used to bring him down here on earth, how is he going to forgive me? Should I fall short of his glory? Warning number one, warning number two, Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. What does it say? Honor your mother and father, and then your days on this earth will be long in the land that your Lord will give you. So the Lord will bless me, right? But if I don't have a relationship, with, a good relationship with my mom and dad, I'm operating under a curse. So now this guy, he doesn't have the blessing of his mom and dad. How am I? How is he going to be a blessing to me? Or how am I? going to be able to tell him anything and he listens since naturally he's unable to submit to anyone so that's enough for you it doesn't matter if he's driving a ferrari and he's rocking a rolex watch and he's looking all that and a slice of post you know in your mind not to come back the bible is the only place where we get the red flags about people but that comes from having a spirit of discernment you don't want to fall into something where a person looks very, very pretty. And then only, only and only one year or two years down the line, it's a, wow, this relationship has to rest in peace. And worse still, you're stranded in there because you have ties that keep you in that environment with this person who every time they wake up, they tear the anointing upon your life, the calling upon your life. Because Jesus is a prince of peace and he only sits on a settled heart. But every time you operate with this person, you're operating in the anointing of the spirit upon them, anger, anxiety, you know, all of these things. So guys, I am trying to get into, um, I've given you a full picture of Proverbs chapter three, verse four. Now let's go into bulleting. Why am I doing these steps? Let's open the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is one of the big prophets. He is before Jeremiah. So you can understand where we're doing, where, what we're doing. I don't like to speak outside of the word. I don't want to operate in my earthly mind. So it's important that we use the scriptures so then we know that it is God speaking. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 says, Whom will I teach knowledge? Because now we are trying to know the Lord, right? Who will I teach knowledge? And whom will he make to understand the message? Those just weaned from milk, like those who just got born again yesterday. Those just don't, those just drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. So I just gave you the precept. Okay, so we're here to learn how to, to, to get scripture to talk with us. So I've given you the entire scripture, which is the precept, the law. Okay, but now we need to look into the line, line upon line, and we're going to break it down into little lines. Here a little, there a little. That's where you find us going to going into the other scripture. You know, <clears throat> for example, we're in the book of Proverbs, but we find ourselves going into Hebrews. We find ourselves going into Mark. This is how you sit down, and God speaks to you from all over the Bible. Because with every sentence that we're going to break down, He will remind you of a scripture that you read somewhere before. And this is exactly how you have conversations with Jesus. This is how you have conversations with this book. 
This is how you start to treasure your Bible. This because the Bible will, st will start to tell you things that no one has ever told you before. The Bible will give you answers to the most confusing situations. And then you and Jesus will be happy. And then you'll have 100% here on earth and in heaven. Praise King Jesus. So let's break it down. The first line says, of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4, it says, And so, mm -hmm, that's the first line. Is that too short? And so find. Okay, the first line should be, and so find. Mm -hmm. Favor is line two. And high esteem. And high esteem. In the sight. In the sight. Of God. And man. Praise King Jesus. Wow. So previously we did verses 1, 2, and 3. So I'll read them just so we can have a recap. Verse 1. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. Verse 2. For length of days and long life, <coughs> and peace will be, and peace will add to you, or peace will be added unto you. Verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Now, verse four. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So guys, this business that we're doing of breaking this scripture down, I beg you, even as you read a scripture out there, don't just read it as a one big you know, it's like stuffing a whole cake into your mouth. I want us to do a slice, a slice. Have you noticed that when you have a big cake, if you eat it like a greedy child, you, you get irritated easily. Like you can't take any more than five slices. You know, you take a slice a day and a slice the next day and, you know, enjoy the icing. Sometimes you'll only eat the icing. And then on a good afternoon, you can just lick on the cream. Then on another day, if it's a different flavor cake today, you'll just, you know, cut a slice of the vanilla, then tomorrow you do the carrots. So you can enjoy the cake. You can, if, if you're a cake a baker yourself, you can even test and say, oh, I think there's a drop of whatever in here. Praise King Jesus. So this is how we're doing this scripture. We want to do it line by line so we can sever the moment so that we can enjoy Jesus because this is Jesus that we're breaking down. Praise King Jesus. Okay. Line one says, and so, and so, I really wanted to leave it at so. Okay, and so. Find favor and high esteem. So let's start with and so. And so. Don't forget the, the four W's. What are those? What, why, when, where. Think of those. And so. So you start to ask yourself, and so what? What is he talking about? So you're conversing with Jesus. And so what? So, so what? So what? What? What are you talking about? What do you want to say? You know, sometimes we use so as if to ask a question. Or so, on. so, you know, somebody can say, mm, I don't like your dress. So, like, so what? So there's something about, yeah, what are you trying to say to me? So, so presents, so I, I find that so is the operative word here. We always like to find the operative word. I'd like for you to buy a highlighter as well so you can highlight it. So, okay. So leaves you hanging like so. What, what's it to you? What do you mean? Like so, so what? Like what's coming? Find favor. Okay. Find. What's the operative word here? Both words are key. Find and favor. So let's capitalize on find. What is find? So I like to have a dictionary as I do my alone time because sometimes I, I, this Bible has humbled me. It has taught me that I don't know English at all. The words that I thought that I knew when I look into the scriptures, I find that I didn't know at all. So I try to look for the synonyms like for the, what's the other word for this word? 
what's the definition of this word because remember this bible was translated from hebrews and into english so if you have a french bible boy you know i struggle when i read the lugano bible because i feel like it has really been watered down and every time i'm reading with somebody and they tell me something in luganda i'm like yo let me first tell you what it was in english so we can look for other luganda words for that because i feel like you're being undersold i'm sure even when a person that understands Greek and Hebrew, when they hear me go on about what I have understood, they're thinking, you don't even have the half of it. Because the guy that translated from Hebrew to English missed out this, that, and the other. Do you get it? So since the word of God has been, first off, I want to recognize King James for translating the Bible for us. All the drama that erupted in England to, for people to get this word, the Bible to be turned to English. There's people that lost their lives. So I'm appreciative so much for those that found it worthy to translate this Bible to English for us, right? I appreciate them. But what I'm trying to push forward is, um, is the word we could have missed. So that's why this step is important. Line upon line, here a little, there a little. You find the line, First, we get the precept like we did in the, we did in the beginning. Then we get the, the short sentence, line upon line. And then we look for the operative word so we can fully understand the line. So the word can bring, the operative word can bring the line to life into our understanding and into our life situation. So Michelle, I've come into my secret place and I'm dissecting Proverbs chapter 3 verse 4. And the Lord is saying to me, so Michelle, find, find, what is to find? Ah, to locate. For example, to look at something. Okay. Uh, so what's the opposite of find? Well, what's the other word for find? What, what? Seek. Seek and find. So what's the opposite of find? Oh, I was lost. Okay, lost. Michelle, was I lost? Yes, a lot has happened to me and I feel lost. Okay, so I need to find. That's what the scripture is saying. And so find. Okay. So to find, before I find, I have to seek. So as you're talking about these two words, the Holy Spirit starts to drop scripture. Seek first the kingdom of God and all the rest. Whatever you want to find in Jesus, seek first the kingdom of God. Okay. So for me to find, it takes seeking. So what is seeking? It is for me, seeking is for me to, 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 to diligently come into the scriptures because we're seeking you know, last week we were here and we were seeking for mercy and truth. Before that, we were seeking peace. So what does that say to me? Nothing is going to ever come to me on a silver plate. I have to put in some effort. So for me to find, you know, scripture says in the book of Psalms that it is the glory of God to hide, but it's the glory of kings to seek and find. So I have to seek and then find. It is finding that makes me a queen in the sight of the Lord. Why? Because there's so many women out there in the world and all of us, we are up to one agenda. I have to find the right husband. I have to find the right business. I have to find the right this, the right the other. And only queens or kings can find. So what makes me a queen is my ability to seek and find the Lord because Jesus is the king of kings. So if I am to operate in my kingship or in my queenship, I have to find him and that takes for me seeking. So I find I'm learning now that seeking takes a bit of work. It means I have to come to the scriptures diligently and maybe that's why the Lord has allowed this teaching to land into it has been popping up on my phone and I'm chasing it away and meanwhile I'm pursuing Jesus but the Lord is feeling sorry for me because I'm pursuing what I do not know and he wants to teach me how to hear from him so I can become a queen. Praise King Jesus. So it is queens that seek. So what he's seeking, I have to come back every day. Read. Oh, reminds me of that song. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. I want my business to grow. Okay. So I need to seek the Lord. But what has the Lord got to do with my business? Listen, scripture says that you have to um, love the Lord and love your neighbor. So if I read the Bible and I learn to love other people, that means I won't have to be looking for... Um, uh, clients for my business. Why? Because I get along with everybody. The customer that came to my shop yesterday and I spoke to them nicely and I gave them a good product. I make sure that all of my products are good because again, scripture says 
that you know the lord is not happy with people that twist the weighing scales and then they give other, you know you sell a product that you know for a fact is bad but you sell it for a lot of money because you're so greedy you're thinking short term so then for you from the knowledge of the bible because you know that the lord hates people that alter the scales and i don't know if you've ever been to the market here we do it here in uganda you go to buy some peas and a tin the lady says to you this is five thousand Someone once told me that they cut out the bottom of that tin and they push it high a little, the bottom of the tin. So it's not actually a full tin, it's half a tin. But at the top, she makes it seem like it's really full. And, and then when, she, when, she, when you say to her, give me a tin, and then she'll find a dramatic way of pouring half a tin without you seeing the bottom of it, without you noticing that the bottom has been pushed up and she's thinking she's making money, but she's actually stealing. She forgets that the Lord is all knowing and all seeing and life is all about principles. Whatever we do in the dark shall be revealed according to Daniel chapter two, verse 22. It says that the Lord reveals deep and secret things. So the Lord knows everything that you're doing to rob your customers. And for that reason, you'll never be successful. But you come to church. And you pray to God, Father, make me successful. And the reason why you're doing this thing is because everyone else is doing it in the marketplace. And you think it's normal. But when you come and chill with the Lord, he says to you, no, 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 no. I don't chill with thieves. Satan is the one who steals. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. So wherever you're robbing, I'm talking about a market person, but you know yourself. You know what you're doing in that office. Those envelopes that you're taking from the customer so that they can get the gig, all of that is theft, bribing, and all of their cousins. And all of those are for Satan. So no matter how much tithe you give to the pastor and he lays his hand on you and he says, God bless you, excuse you, God will not, the pastor will speak, but God can only operate according to the word because God is holy. He is set apart. He only deals with the holy. So it don't matter how much you give to community and you do what this other principle will tie you down. He might want to help you because he likes those who help the poor, but you have to be straight with him. Where do you get the money from? How do you get the money? If you get it via prostitution, he can't help you. Why? Because you're in the devil. Sorry, you're in the bed with the devil. Praise King Jesus. So, I need to come and seek these scriptures, the scriptures, and I know how the Lord wants me to operate. So when I seek, what will happen? I will get wisdom. What is wisdom? God himself. Huh? Listen to um, Job chapter 28, verse 28. Uncle Job, where are you? Before Psalms? Hold on. Uh-huh. Job 28, 28. This guy walked a lovely journey with the Lord before the, he came to a conclusion and said, you know what? Listen to Job 28, 28. He said, and to man, God said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil, that is understanding. So again, I'm sorry to bust your bubble if you thought that just leaving your, lifting your holy hands, the wisdom shall come upon you. The Lord can do that. He's gracious. But how do you sustain it? How do you maintain your deliverance? Because you, you need to know the precepts in order for you to keep that, that which the Lord has given to you. So scripture is saying, okay, I need to fear the Lord because then that is wisdom. So what is the fear of the Lord? I will not alter the scales. I will not sell bad products because the Lord hates those things. That right there is wisdom. Because the Lord hates them, I will please the Lord. But also, guess what? I will please my customers because I have followed the Lord. I will do the right thing that will please the people that buy from me. And for that reason, everybody will want to buy my products. Now, that is what we call favor. Like, people like my products, not because they taste extremely nice, but there's this continence, there's the vibration, there's, I'm doing things right with God, and for that reason, man cannot resist me. And also, the spirit downloads to me good ideas on how to excel in my business, and then I am better than everyone else. Praise King Jesus. Okay, so, <laughs> I have a story. One time I had to... um help a friend organize his wedding meetings. And uh, of course, the first, the launch is called the launch. You have to have snacks. So I had to take care of that. I remember I was driving to church and I found a woman um, frying cassava by the roadside. So I said to her, listen, I need cassava. I'll, I gave her the money because I needed a lot. I gave her a deposit to go and buy more. 
And, and, and because she was nice, I said to her, okay, listen, don't just give me ordinary, because in Uganda, you know, cassava, they only sprinkle salt and they're done. So I said to her, do this for me. First and foremost, don't do big chunks. Do reasonably small ones. Give it some time. I need you to season it with the salt because this business of putting raw salt on the cassava, I don't want. You season it. And not just the salt. Go buy some garlic. Crush some garlic. Mix it together with the salt. That's all that I need. And then you put very little water and soak the cassava in there. Boil it a little even because I'll be at church for four hours. And when I come back, give me exactly that. It's chick. She, I came back, she gave me my cassava, but she found favor in my sight because of how, because there was a good number of them and, you know, she treated me nicely. So I gave her my little recipe and when I came to pick up the cassava, she was so happy. She said, mom, this is so tasty. Mm -hmm. She gave me my cassava. I went ahead and did my, the event that I had. And when I drove back months later, she told me, you know what? I sell out. I sell out. By 9 a.m., my cassava is gone because I'm the only one that does the garlic thing. And people were so fed up of just salt. So everybody that fancies something different comes to me. You understand? So this girl, she, she was nice. She found favor in the sight of the Lord and me that I added the little that I know onto what she was good at doing. And for that reason, her business expanded. Now, reverse this story and think of a person that you give them your money and you want something that's worthy of the money that you've given to them, but it's not as good. You will not see them again. You will not come back to them. And then we come back to church and pray, sweat. I, 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 you know, I even want to talk about this word prayer. I have a feeling that us Ugandans, especially Baganda, we've been done a disservice. Because the word prayer in Luganda is translated kusaba. People think they can only come and ask and ask and ask and ask and things will be done. Yes, scripture says ask and you will receive. But also it says seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open. So why are we focusing on only part A of the scripture, which is what we're good at? There's other principles and precepts, line upon line, remember? So there's a part on our side that we have to do to respect the principles in order for certain things to happen. So instead of praying morning, noon and night, Pray in the morning and then actually look into the, script, the scriptures. First of all, to look into the scriptures helps you to pray from a point of understanding. It helps you to pray with faith because the scriptures give you faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word only, the word of God. So it gives you faith. Then not just that, it also gives you instructions. The scriptures will give you instructions on how to excel in what you're doing because you've seen how David did it. You've seen how whoever does it. You've seen how the wisest man Solomon is advising us in Proverbs, the wise man of the time. And you are a lot wiser because we have the spirit of the Lord right now. And we are operating in the era of after Jesus because Jesus said we shall be able to do a lot more. So we come to these scriptures to actually understand. That's why Joshua 1, 8 says to us this book of the law, number one, shall not depart from your lips. Meditate in it day and night. And then observe to walk according to what is written in it. And then you will make your way prosperous. So our prosperity is in our hands. So, and, and, and that means we have to respect the earlier parts of that scripture to tap into our prosperity. Nobody will do it for you. It is you that has to do it. Yes, you'll call me to pray for you. And you know the father and prayer of a righteous man avails much. The Lord will hear. But you also have to be righteous. You have to do things right. You have to do things the way that he expects you to do them so that Satan has no legal right over your business because every time you still have a bit of theft and everything and witchcraft in your business, you're pretty much lounging on the couch with Satan even though you come to church. This is what seeking helps us. I'm talking about seeking because the Lord has said, and so find. So I need to find. But how do I find? I seek. What do I seek? The scriptures. It's the glory of God to hide. It's the glory of kings to seek and find. The Lord, scripture actually specifically says in NKJV, it is the, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is concealed. It's a treasure. It's the glory of I, Michelle, 
to remove, to dig deeper, to understand what it is saying. Because the Lord is holy. Not everyone can access him. Remember when Moses called the children of Israel, it, um, when the Lord called um, the children of Israel to go to, um, to that mountain, um, they were invited, but they could only stay at the bottom of the mountain. Scripture says, Moses and the elders, I think, they went to the next level. But Moses went farther ahead. Yeah? Joshua stayed on another level. But Moses went farther ahead. Why? Because he's a king. It's the glory of kings to seek and find. And this YouTube channel is not for lift your holy hands and get a miracle. This YouTube channel is for those that want to seek, those that want to excel. So I'm sorry, but these teachings can be even long and they might not be exciting for some. But if you want to become a queen, you have to seek. You have to seek so that you can find. No wonder scripture is commanding us. And so find. Praise King Jesus. What, do you, what will you find? Favor. I'm glad we've been talking about favor. So now we're going back to Proverbs chapter 3, where we were. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4. And so find favor. We're on to line number 4. Okay? Find favor and high esteem. So what is favor? Favor is what a lot of us are looking for. And, and I think I talked about that in the introduction as well. The only way you'll find favor in the sight of man is if you have favor in the sight of God. I want to speak as it is. I don't want to sugarcoat because we're here to speak facts according to the word. You don't just get favor in the sight of your husband. It starts with the Lord. Only favor in the sight of the Lord will help you to sustain what you have with your husband. Your pretty looks got you into his heart, but we need you to dig into his mind. The looks only appealed to his flesh you know, the, 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 the last of the flesh. Because remember, we are all soil. According to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, from the dust of the earth we were formed before the Lord breathed his spirit. Now, John 6, 63 said to us, the flesh profits nothing. The spirit gives life. So the spirit is the spirit of the living God because in, in, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, he breathed his spirit into us, which means God is the ultimate spirit. So for us to find favor in his sight, we have our spirits have to tap into the spirit of the living God. And the best way to maintain that, you know, much as he gave us his spirit and the spirit gives life, we need to keep coming back to the word of God to service these spirits. We need to come back to the one that manufactured us. You can't get a Mercedes and take it to a Toyota garage for servicing. You need to come back to the one that knows that car very, very well. So we come back to the one that knows these minds because he created them in his own image, in his likeness. So we come to the Lord so that the Lord can line can take us back into the garden of Eden in the position that we are that we were in in Genesis chapter 1 and 2 before the serpent came in in Genesis chapter 3 and altered our minds via his questions and words Satan alters he, he changes the narrative he oh my god this liar he packages his words in a way that sounds true but it takes one who has sought and found the actual truth to challenge the lies of satan you know he comes and says to eve did god indeed say that you shall not touch that tree of knowledge oh come on you know so he has a lot of words that sound like the truth but it takes a woman that knows the ultimate truth my days you remind me of queen um bathsheba the mom of solomon Oh, wow. What a story. Guys, go and read the book of 2 Samuel. I'm being blessed so much. So I'll just give you a summary. Bathsheba, she has a baby with Solomon. And um, while they're relating, they have issues. I mean, their relationship has issues from the get-go. You know, Solomon sees Sheba. She falls in love. Sorry, he likes her. Calls, calls calls her to his house. I mean, he's the king. He commands. I suppose she comes and bam, she gets pregnant. And now David has to do an ungodly thing and murder the husband. You know, you know the whole story. In 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 you know, and um, so now David has two capital sins: adultery and murder. But hey, that is the law because we serve a God of grace. Where you know Jesus existed in David's time even before now. Praise King Jesus. So anyway. David repents, he turns, 
he turns, he cries out to the Lord, he fasts and prays like he's prophesied about it because um, he is punished. You know, he owns up to his issue. The prophet comes in and says to him, David, this has happened. The Lord knows what you have done. And he says, oh my God, I've sinned against the Lord. Unlike Saul, um, David owns up to his problem and, and you know, the Lord says, okay, yeah, I understand. I forgive you. You're my friend, but there's consequences. Your baby has to die because if that baby stays alive, it will remind Israel of the sin that you have committed. And me, mm -mm -mm -mm, I'm all about purity. So the baby dies. When the baby dies, um, David and Sheba, after David is done mourning, him and Sheba go back to bed and, and you know, he's pure. He's been praying, fasting, and everything. He's repented. And when they make love, God sends the spirit of Solomon from above and bam, into the woman's belly. And when Sheba has this baby, the Lord even sends a prophet to say, that is my beloved, you know, and, and my, my version gives in the study section of the MKJV study Bible. It says, and the baby was called an Yes, he was named Solomon, but Solomon also means Jedidiah. Jedidiah means the beloved of the Lord. Uh, you know, it shows us the grace of the Lord, the mercies of the Lord, that even though this baby was conceived in the law, sin, thou shalt not commit adultery, David's heart turning back to Jesus, to the cross, and, you know, to, to turn you know, to, to, to turn and David shows that he believes in God even more despite the backsliding a little. What they bath is so beautiful and, and, and um, the Lord loves this boy. But you see, David was a man who had multiple wives. A lot of years later and a lot of women in between, David is very old in the book of First Kings. To the extent that they have to bring in a younger girl to, to, to you know, to just keep him warm as a king. <laughs> uh, what's her name? Abishag. Abishag. So, but the Bible says um, David never slept with the little girl. But, you know, she was there. Young girl. Fam boobs. Figure eight. Everything. Physical beauty. But now, um, I'm looking at Sheba, the Bathsheba, the lady that has the favor of the Lord. She does. Look into her lineage. She's the daughter of Eliam, and Eliam is the son of Ahitophel. Ahitophel was, a, you know, the wisest counselor at the time. He was a servant of God. So this girl comes from a pure family. So before we, we you know, we start to play judge, oh, how could she, how could she, operating in the law, because that's the nature of man, all is to find fault, you know, accuser of the brethren. We need to look at the nature of God and the character of God in every situation for us to have a beautiful revelation that pushes us forward in this world. Praise King Jesus. So anyway, David is very old. Sheba is minding her business with her son Solomon. But you see, David's son, Adonijah, he tries to take the throne. But you see, David promised. David promised Sheba that this Solomon will be the one to come onto the throne after me, right? But the Bible says that David heard that Adonijah was inaugurating himself as king after David, and David did nothing about it. You know, he was a man of peace, and, you know, he had probably had it, you know, he had lost several sons, you know, Absalom died, who, you know, Amnon died. He'd lost many kids, and he was done running after his children. He was a very loving dad. So anyway... He took a woman, now this is the juice, he took a woman, Sheba, who knows the Lord. I just gave you a, a history of her family, okay? And also a woman who has the word to come in and speak to who? To David and say, excuse me, your royal highness. Before we even get to that, before Sheba comes to, a path, Sheba comes to, um, to, to, to David to remind him of, um, what's happening. I wanted to pull out the fact that Sheba, Bathsheba had the favor of David. And I want to point out to you that the, the favor that Bathsheba had in the sight of David had nothing to do with a hot body. Remember when David sees Bathsheba bathing, when he's on top of a roof, he's drawn by an image of what a beautiful woman looks like naked. But now we look at her, tons of years later, wrinkly boobs, gray hair and everything, and she comes 
to David. But this time she comes in with the favor. How do I know Bathsheba has the, the favor of the Lord? I know that this woman knew God because I just told you she's the granddaughter of Ahitophel, the wisest counselor of the time in Israel, right? The man who hears from God. And she's also the daughter of Eliam, a faithful servant. He's one of the strong men that served David. So I know that this woman was brought up right and she was brought up seeking the Lord. If King David has to, if the people of Israel have to seek the wisdom of Ahithophel, then I know that um, Bathsheba was brought up in the same manner, praise King Jesus. So I know that she has the favor of the Lord, that even when her body starts to grow wobbly and she doesn't look like she can be on a page of a magazine, she has a continence, she has wisdom, she has a, the favor of the Lord. And how do I know she has the favor of the Lord again? Prophet Nathan comes in and says, excuse me, do you know what's happening? It is the prophet that comes in and, and advises her that, look, Ad Adonijah is doing this. He's taking the throne of your son. Why? This man of God was there when the Lord was promising David that he will have a son to sit on the throne of Israel forever. So now this same man of God comes to Bathsheba and says, excuse you, do you know that someone is trying to steal your throne? So I'm looking, I'm looking at women that hear from God. First of all, you have to seek, like the scripture has said, for you to be able to know what the Lord is saying. And when the Lord sends his word, you hold on to that word for dear life. But not just that, the Holy Spirit plays the role of, um, of who? Of, uh, of, of this, <laughs> the Holy Spirit will use anyone to come and remind you. So I'm talking about this prophet that came in just in time to warn Bathsheba that look, Someone is trying to take the throne of you, Prophet Nathan. So Prophet Nathan is playing the role of the Holy Spirit. He comes and says, look, Bathsheba, don't snooze on the job. Do you remember what your husband told you? Do you remember what God said before? So this woman has the favor in the sight of the Lord. That's why the Lord sends Nathan to come and remind her that, look, someone is trying to steal the throne. Praise King Jesus. So I'm looking for women that have found favor in the sight of the Lord. So when this woman, she comes in front of um, David to, 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 to remind David of what's been happening. Please note, David has a new bud, very hot chick. Read the whole book of um, First Kings chapter one. Um, Abishag, the Shunammite, listen, uh, I think it's about time I read. Listen, First King chapter one, verse three says, so they sought a lady. Verse 1, I'll do verse 1. First Kings chapter 1, verse 1 says, Now King David was old, advanced in years, and they put covers on him, but he could not get warm. Verse 2, Therefore his servant said to him, Let a young man, a virgin, be sold for our Lord the king, and let her stand before the king, and let her care for him, and let her lie in the bosom, in your bosom, that our Lord the king may be warm. Verse 3, so they sought for a, a lovely young woman throughout all the territory of Israel and found Abishag the Shunammite and brought her to the king. The young woman was very lovely and she cared for the king and served him, but the king did not know her. In the Bible, when you read to know, it means did not sleep with her, did not know her carnally, praise King Jesus. Then Adonijah, the son of um. Haggith exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen and 50 men and ran, uh, to run before him. Verse 6, and his father had not rebuked him at any time by saying, why have you done so? He was also very good looking. His mother had born him after Absalom, another good looking guy. Then he conferred with Joab ETC. I don't want to read the whole story. I just wanted to pull out the fact that this chick was hot, Abishag. She was very pretty, right? So now we have a woman that's operating under favor, wisdom. A woman that's operating beyond looks. Because remember, even she was super hot that David had to kill her husband to be with her, praise King Jesus. But when she comes in after the Holy Spirit has reminded her through Nathan that look, why are you seated here? 
Hmm? Listen to verse 11 of 1 King. It says, So Nathan spoke to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Have you not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, has become king, and David our Lord does not know it? Come, please, let me now give you advice that you may save your own life and the life of your own son, Solomon. Go immediately to the king and say to your maidservant, saying, No, go immediately, immediately to the king and say to him, Did you not, my lord, O king, swear to your maidservant, saying, Assuredly, your son Solomon shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne. Why then has Adonijah become king? Then while you are still talking there with the king, I also will come in after you and confirm your words. Verse 15. So Bathsheba went into the chamber of the king. Now the king was very old, and Abishag the Shunammite was serving the king. Verse 16. And Bathsheba bowed and did homage to the king. Then the king said, what is your wish? I feel like this verse 15 and 16 is what we need. Ladies, be honest with me. A lot of us, eh? we need Jesus. It takes a lot of Jesus for this woman, Sheba, to walk in and doesn't have beef because she has found her former beloved with a hot 18-year-old woman serving him. I don't know how Abishag was serving David. You know, she must have been, you know, fixing his hair, all being lovey-dovey and all of those things. But, but when, when um, Bathsheba walks in, she does, not, she does not consider the presence of a rival. She comes in to regard the king, to speak to the king. She comes in in all humility and submits to the king. The Bible says in verse 16, and Bathsheba bowed and did homage to the king. Like she humbled herself. She didn't come in and, you know, put her hand in her waist and start to say, excuse me, David, you fool, because you're busy sleeping around with young girls. You don't even know that your son, um, Absalom, is over there trying to become king. Yet you, did you not promise that my son, Solomon, would be the one to take the throne? Excuse me, Bathsheba was not carnal. She came in as a whole woman. What is a whole woman? A hundred percent woman is a woman who has wisdom. And what is wisdom? Humility. She came in and bowed down and paid homage and did homage to the king. And the king said, what is your wish? So this is how we get into the men's hearts. We put them in their position. Remember God created man in his own image. So when it was time for woman, God didn't bother to reinvent the world. He just put man to sleep and pulled out woman. So woman has to submit to man as man is submitting to God. When you're dealing with men that know God like David, you have no business operating in the anointing of Satan, which is confusion, frustration, and chaos. You need to come in in a manner of humility. And who's the king of humility? Jesus. So when she comes in and she acts like Jesus, I like David. He really got nice women. There's Abigail, and now we're looking at Bathsheba. Anyway, she humbles herself. Even though the flesh is saying, what are you doing with that young girl when we are all a thousand years old with gray hair in the armpits and everywhere? Anyway, when she humbles herself, the king says, what's your wish? So she goes ahead to state her wish and the king listens. So what are we talking about? You, you have to find favor. And you find favor by seeking it. And the favor that you need is in the sight of the Lord. So that when anything that's going on behind your back, it is in the business of God to send a prophet to send a man of God to tell you what's happening behind your back. Somebody is trying to steal the throne. Praise King Jesus. And when the man comes to you, he says, now you need to go and speak to the king. Why? Because us women have been given the power. There's something about a woman. A woman births. A woman's words give life. Bathsheba had to be the one to go in first. Listen, Nathan could have gone straight to David, but he knew protocol, right? Sheba, you have the anointing to speak and something is, is established, praise King Jesus. So 
Shimba knows David. David is a very powerful man, valiant man, mighty man of war, man after God's own heart. But he is human, old age. He forgot, either he forgot or he had a day of praise King Jesus and we all get days off. But it takes a woman who has an anointing of the Lord, the favor of the Lord, to stand before the king in a humble manner and say to him, hey, remember what you told the Lord, what you swore to me? <laughs> well, listen, it says, then Sheba said to David in, um, I think this will be verse 17, then she said, my Lord, you swore by the Lord your God to your maid servant, saying, Assuredly, Solomon, your son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit on the throne. Do you see? So she comes in in all humility and reminds David of what he saw before the Lord. Let me tell you, any power of a powerful man is his word. You are as good as your word. We live a life of words. God created the world via words. So when a man that knows, every man that knows God knows the power in his words, right? So this woman comes in to challenge David on his word because David is a man after God's own heart. He knows that God operates according to his word. Even as when we go to prayer, we should go to prayer challenging God on his word. And not just for our own interest. For Solomon to be king, it was for the benefit of the whole of Israel because that's what the Lord said when this baby was born, when these two were still madly in love, praise King Jesus. But you see, it's also important for Sheba. Every, let me tell you something, when you do these books of the kings, every powerful king, they never neglected to talk about the queen mother. The queen mother is key. In fact, um, Bathsheba says to um to David in verse 21 that otherwise it will happen when you my lord the king rests with his father's put days then I and my, my son Solomon will be counted as offenders why because your rogue son Absalom is there he's gathered Joab the commander and Joab has influenced the entire nation to go to a party of a fake launch so if this thing is successful they will kill us but remember Solomon remember the words of the lord Remember the words of the Lord. Jedidiah, the beloved of the son, is supposed to be in the lineage of Jesus Christ. So I'm talking about a woman that has the favor of the Lord via the knowledge of God, that he has the authority to stand before the king. All she has to say is a few words, then the Holy Spirit will come in and fuel them. Because Nathan says to Sheba, you go, go immediately. Listen to verse 13. Go immediately to King David and say to him, did you not, my lord or king, swear to your maid servant, saying, Assuredly, your son Solomon shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne? Why then has Adonijah become king? Then while you are still talking there with the king, I will also come in after you and confirm your words. There can only be a confirmation of words after there's been words. You cannot confirm what does not exist. In the beginning, the earth was empty and void. Then the spirit of the Lord hovered. Everything that the Lord said, the spirit brought to, to fruition, praise King Jesus. It is the spirit that gives life. Even when we were formed from the dust of the earth, the spirit was breathed into us. Everything, you know, some of us are so good at Christianese, we can quote the Bible back to front. But because of the absence of the spirit, our words are as good as no other spirits. So we need to be in the word with a clean heart so that the spirit can come in and work. So Nathan is saying to Sheba, look, you are the bath. You are the mother. You need to say the first words. When you say the first words, I will come in and breathe my spirit. Oh God, this is so much fun. Listen, if you're a woman and you're listening to this, you need to know your worth. You need to know who you are in God. We, God gave us a lot of power in Genesis chapter 3. I'll read it for you as we conclude because I feel like this, the, the favor, we need to understand the favor that we have from God. A lot of women might downplay their authority because the men like to say as, oh, you know, you're the reason Adam fell. Hey, you haven't encountered the God of grace. You sure have not because if you had, you would know. Praise King Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. This is after the business in the Garden of Eden. So we shall start at Genesis chapter 3, verse... 
Verse 14, it says, So the Lord spoke to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. Verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Like people, please notice the seed of the serpent is small s. The seed of the woman is capital S. I told you every time you see capital S, we are talking Jesus business. Praise King Jesus. Between you and your seed and her seed, capital S. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Verse 16. To the woman, God said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Verse 17. No, no, that, that's where we shall stop. So I needed you to understand that the Lord gave us authority in verse 15 that the seed of Eve, capital S, would bruise the serpent on the head. Now, this is how a woman's seed bruises the seed of the serpent. The woman has to seek the kingdom of God. When you seek the kingdom of God, through reading his word, you get an understanding of who God is. Getting the understanding of who God is, or who Jesus is, is what gives you authority because it pushes you into a space of believing. Life rules on belief. So listen to this. For God so loved the world that he sent his own son, only begotten son, that whoever believes, whoever believes, in him will not perish but have everlasting life what is the everlasting life jesus who is jesus the seed the seed of the woman so it's okay whatever we've done in the past that led to a fall of sorts that is fine we need to come back to jesus so we can birth a seed capital s only a woman who is in god can birth a seed with a capital s that can bruise the serpent on the head this is how Bath bathsheba was able to go back into the presence of david and challenge him on what's happening on the other side and when that happened david arose and called other people as witnesses and solomon was enthroned as king over israel please note the word was there for from God from before but it needed a woman's breath it needed a woman's words so excuse me lady you need to come back and seek the Lord so that you can find favor and high esteem when Sheba comes before King David she has favor and high esteem in the sight of David that Abishag becomes very minimal you have no business bewitching your rival you have no business going to the shrine because your husband got an 18 year old girl no 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 come to Christ and tap into your queenship so that you can speak a word and it is established Job chapter 22 acquaint yourself in the words of the Lord a few verses down the line 25 and you will speak a thing and it will be established praise king jesus so come and acquaint yourself seek then you'll find favor in the sight of god that when you're having a day off and you are by the way you're not having a day off it's just that the enemy is very cunning according to genesis chapter 3 he pops in when we are not aware this guy absalom he went and organized his you know inauguration and everything without um sheba's knowledge but the Lord will send Nathan because you are a sweetheart of the Lord. You are acquainted with the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Oh my God. John 16, 13, it says, however, when he has come, the spirit of truth, he will reveal to you all truth because he will not speak of his own authority. He will speak of what he hears from the throne of the father. So it's in the Lord's business to come and tell you secrets that no one, your in-laws don't like you. It is okay. Stick to the Lord. The Lord will tell you what they are planning. And then the Lord will send you a Nathan. The Lord, let me tell you, you can't roll in the word and the, and the Lord doesn't send you friends that are in the word. The Lord will wake up and, and Nathan, who was there? Again, he's a God of witnesses. He has witnesses. When we are doing good, there's witnesses. So I'm speaking to a woman. Yes, 
There was a witness, there was a Nathan, when the Lord was declaring that Solomon would be king after David. So at the appointed time when Satan or his whoever is using people that are so full of pride, like Adonijah over here, who thought he was so cool and so handsome, and he exalted himself and he said, I will be king. Eh -eh. The Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will exalt you up. This one exalted himself. This is the nature of Satan. This is what happened to him. He exalted himself. He thought he could rule with God in heaven and that's why he was thrown down here on earth. So I'm calling on to women who do not exalt themselves, who do not go competing with the Abishags in their husband's lives. No. Seek the Lord. Know your worth. Your worth is the Lord. Wisdom. It is okay to look pretty, but don't neglect the little fact yet so big that your continence, your wisdom is everything because it is the wisdom that brings Sheba before the king and she acts in a humble manner. She bows down and she, you know, gives the king um, his due respect and the king says to Sheba, what do you wish? But Sheba is acting like Esther. What do you wish? But these kinds of women are born in the secret place. They come and seek. They seek. Esther went and fasted three days and she, she sought the Lord. But also Esther had a Nathan. Who was her Nathan? Uncle Mordecai. So do the mathematics. Seek the Lord. He'll surround you with the right people. With the, with, with the right you know, people to work with. To guide you in this salvation work. Seek him. He will bring them. I, am at, you know, I testify. I know. All the friends that work closely with me right now. I never knew I would have. The more I dug deeper into the word, he brought them. And guess what? You do not need many. Absalom, he had the entire village. He killed cows, fat, 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 fat cows and sheep and things. Solomon only had, um, was it Abiathar? No, Zedok. And uh, his inauguration was very, very few people. Where are they? Aha. Uh -huh. Take with you. Verse 33, the king also said to them, take with you the servants of your Lord. This is First Kings chapter 1, verse 33. Take with you the servants of your Lord and have Solomon, my son, ride on my mule and take him to Gihon. There let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him as king and blow a horn. So excuse me, Solomon's inauguration has like not more than five people. His mom, Nathan, Zadok, and guess what? The Holy Spirit was there. The Lord was there. So in Christ, it's not about how many friends you have. It is who you have. <laughs> Seek him. You will find high esteem. When you find favor in the sight of the Lord, it is his business who he brings close to you. And God is not all about numbers. The battle is not won with numbers. It's not about the swift. It is the spirit of the living God. So now, the Lord will give you the right people because of the calling upon your life, because of the anointing upon your life. The people who want to go deeper into the word of God, it is because the Lord has favored them to find out their purpose in life. And I'm glad that this platform is for women because we need women to stand back into their positions. We need women that know the word, women that know what the Lord said, because the Lord will give them Nathans, the right people to work with. And because of this, they will birth the right babies, Solomon, Jedediah, they will birth the right people who will reign, who will be kings over nations. Behind every successful man is a powerful woman, and it starts with the mummy, the mummy that knows, the mummy that's humble, the mummy that knows not to badmouth the father of the children because the father of the children has the final word over that child, and the mom knows to operate in humility regardless of how they split up so that Solomon can sit on the throne so that Israel may be blessed and wow you really have to be on good terms there will be special cases where the Lord will say to you mm -mm, first put the father of the child on ice I'm still doing a good job in him and you will obey it's always key to hear from God because there's, there's different incidents in the Bible where the Lord advises to do advises us to do things a certain type of way but make sure that you hear from the lord because i love the words that david speaks over his son 
Mm -hmm. Because um, verse 20, 29 says, um, And the king, 29 of 1 Kings chapter 1, And the king took an oath and said, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from every distress, just as I swore by you, no, just as I swore to you by the Lord of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon, your son shall be king after me, and he shall sit on my throne in, in my place. I, so I certainly will do this day. And then he goes ahead and gives a blessing here in, 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 in verse 37. It says, And the Lord has been, the Lord has been with my Lord the King, even so. May he be with Solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord, the King David. The kid has to amount to more. See, I started off by telling you guys that you will be able to do more than your mother. You will be able to do more than Jesus. You will be able to do more than your father. But you need to tap into your father in heaven. And it all starts with giving your life to Christ. The scripture has said, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So it is so amazing. I love the Holy Spirit that much as we've broken this down, everything that I've explained to you has actually broken down the next three words. That's why I love the spirit of the living God that's operating right now. Find favor and high esteem in the sight, in the sight. Of who? God first and then man. There's no other order. You don't please man to get to God. No, <laughs> we've gotten that twisted. You think that if you do X amount of things for a man who you think is God, you will get to know God. No. Get to know God. Get to know God. Do good things. The Bible says never get tired of doing good. Galatians, never get tired of doing good. So do good unto others, but put in extra energy. In seeking the Lord, because it is the Lord that empowers us to do good to the people. Then we get favor in the sight of God and in the sight of man. This is exactly what happened with Bathsheba, and this is what will happen with you. I thank God for Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4, because it has spoken volumes. I have been blessed. I believe you have been blessed too. So we're going to pray. For the Lord to give us the grace to seek him because he has promised us, he has commanded us to find him, right? When we find the Lord, we shall find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and in the sight of that man, in the sight of your boss, in the sight of your children. We have a lot of moms who don't get along with their kids because the favor of the Lord is absent from the mommy. Yet your child, that one, is a super blessed spirit from God with high antennas connected up to heaven. So every time mommy speaks, the kid sees garbage. We have a lot of dads that don't get along with their kids and they're harassing the kids, saying the kids are very stubborn. But in reality, the kid, you may have the same flesh, but the kid has a different spirit from yours. So until you tap into the spirit of the living God, you'll never make sense to your son. And it all starts with the Bible. Proverbs chapter 3. This is how it has blessed us. So thank you so much for watching this. We're going to pray. I believe there's somebody that wants to give their life to Christ right now because before they thought like, you know, salvation was so complex. Why are born again so broke? Look, the book of the law is nothing like, yes, born again can be broke, but when they get to the level of Christianity, Christianity means walking with Christ. Prosperity is inevitable. That's what Joshua 1 8 has promised us. If you follow these principles and walk according to them, you'll make your way prosperous. So now that you've gotten an understanding of how this whole Jesus thing works, it's important that you give your life to Christ. The boy Solomon that I just told you about is one of the great, 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 great grandparents of Jesus. Praise King Jesus. It is through King Solomon and farther down that Jesus is born. So all of this leads to Jesus. So I'd like for you to give your life to Christ, understanding that indeed he came down as flesh, according to John 1, 14, and he walked with us here on earth. And then after he died on the cross and then he went back to heaven, he's seated on the right-hand side of the Father. But after you repeat these words after me and, and you give your life to him and you become born again, I highly advise that you come back to this book so you don't get frustrated. All the answers to life's questions are here. And the Lord will help you through his word because this word is so full of his spirit. 
It is reading the Bible that helps us to pray in spirit and to walk in spirit and to worship in spirit and in truth. So put your hand on your heart and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I have listened and I have heard and I believe in my heart. I also say it out loud that I am born again. Come into my life. I've made you my Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you. So let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word, for your word of truth, for your word of peace, for your word of joy. Thank you for the words that you have spoken to us. I thank you because through your word, many are being delivered from rejection right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Many are being delivered from depression from all life's confusing questions because you have sent your word father many are healed i thank you for the peace and joy that they're receiving right now in the mighty name of jesus i thank you because these ones will be able to hold on to every good thing that you're doing in their lives via the knowledge that you have given to them i thank you for permanent deliverance that comes with the knowledge of your word i thank you because many are starting to enjoy the salvation walk with you. I thank you because many are going to church now, not just to get material things, but to get a relationship with you, which will help them to maintain and sustain that which you give them here on earth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Guys, we are at Crest Homes. Crest Homes is so pretty. It's a two-bedroom apartment. It's in um, located in Chitende on Entebbe Road. It's only a few minutes drive from the main road. Um, we have two bedroom apartments and there's the master bedroom. It has everything that you want. AC, you know, I like the air conditioning in there. They have lovely mosquito nets. And um, you know, the ones that are so big that, you know, it doesn't have to touch you. You you almost feel like a princess on those lovely beds of theirs. And um, we have an extra room that has twin beds. If you have kids, it's a nice one for a family. And all the, the kids have their bathroom as well. And then the master bedroom has its own bathroom as well. We have free Wi-Fi. We have cable TV. It's a very quiet environment. We have good service. Um, what's it called? Hospitality. The housekeepers are really good. And we go for only $50 a night. If you wish to stay much longer, give us a call. You need to book your holiday already for December before we run out because lately we're so, so jam-packed. You can DM me or you can get our contact numbers on the screen. Thank you so much for watching um, The Word by Michelle. God bless you. Bye.